Okay, so we are going to create some flashcards for cell organelles. So I'm using paper um, because that's what I have, but if you have paper you can do it like me, or if you have note cards you can put um, one note card per organelle. So what I'm going to do is say like this side is the front and this side is the back. So you can see both as we go. The first organelle I want to talk about today is the cell membrane. So on the front of your card, you're going to just draw a, kind of like a wonky circle. So the cell membrane protects the cell, right, by controlling what goes in and out. I'm pretty sure I just spelled that wrong. That's okay. So it's like the gatekeeper for the cell. So cell membrane, you can even write it in here so it helps. Protects the cell by controlling what goes in and out. The next part of the cell, so you can get a new card or you can draw a line if you want. The next part of the cell that we're going to talk about is the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is basically the filling inside the cell. So if I color in the cell and you pretend it's all yellow, then the yellow part would be the cytoplasm, the background basically. So like the air in the room or the floor maybe can, it can represent the cytoplasm. And I'm not going to write over that in yellow because it would be hard to see, right? So cytoplasm is just the fluid inside of the cell. So what I am going to do is write the function in yellow so you can see it. I love color, I love color coding, so if you have markers or matte pencils, that's what I suggest you use. If not, pen or pencil is fine. So the cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance and that's really just fancy talk for pretty much water, pretty much water inside the cell. So it's a jelly-like substance where organelles hang out, or we're just going to say hold organelles. Now really, you have chemical um, reactions going on inside the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm holds more than just the organelles, it does hold other chemicals, um, like the building parts of our cells, so the other parts, the other organelles can do their job. So um, it's fancier than just a fluid, but but all you really need to know is it's jelly-like fluid inside the cell. All right, get you a new card. Or draw you a line. The next organelle is probably one of the most important ones that we're going to talk about because it comes up a lot. So I'm going to draw my membrane again, just so I know where my cell barrier is. So membrane for protects the cell. And then I'm going to draw my new organelle on the inside. And the way I represent this is a big circle inside the cell. And this is the nucleus. So we are eukaryotes, if you remember from sixth grade. You do have a nucleus, right? You do have a nucleus. And the nucleus is a membrane around our DNA. And its job is it controls the cellular activity. Controls cells activities. It's also called the brain of the cell. So we talk about that in sixth grade when we talk about eukaryotes and prokaryotes. You do have a nucleus and we'll talk about it again as we discuss heredity in the for six weeks. All right, one more card, or not one more, but get one more, get another one. The next structure we're going to talk about 
I'm actually going to make my cell look a little different. So this organelle is found in both plants and animals, but it looks different depending on the type of cell you're looking at. So if you're looking at a plant, see why I drew a square? I mean a rectangle, it's not a square, is it still in this page? A vacuole takes up most of the space in a plant cell. Right? They're small in animal cells, but in plant cells they're big. And vacuoles store, they're a big storage container, like kind of like a balloon filled with water. They store water, food, and in animals they can also store waste. Okay. So I remember that vacuole is real big in plants because it helps that plant stand tall by pushing out against this structure here. All right, get you another card. The next organelle we're going to talk about is bean shaped. So you draw like a little bean. It has like a little lightning bolt in the middle. Or like a little squiggly line, but if you think lightning, lightning is energy. So this little dude, the mitochondria, you should try saying that, mitochondria, it breaks down food for energy. That's its job. So this is the back. Breaks down food for energy. So a lot of times you will see that this is referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. One of the cool things about mitochondria is it does have like a type of DNA. We know DNA is in our nucleus. But you don't have to know this for your test, but it's just neat. The mitochondria actually has DNA in it that's only passed down for the mo through the mother side of the family, which is very interesting. That's how they determine who was actually related to Jesse James. But if you're interested, you can come see me in class. It's kind of a cool story. But the mitochondria, little bean shape with a lightning bolt, or a hot dog with mustard. Whatever makes more sense to you. Okay. The next thing is the, you know what, I already used black for this. It goes around the outside of plant cells and fungi cells, right? And it's known as the cell wall. The cell wall, it's a rigid, that means a strong shape, and it provides structure and support. So if you're just watching this and you're not writing this, you're only doing half the work. If you write it, you're going to remember it better. Remember, we use our five senses to learn. We use our ears to hear for hearing, and you're hearing now. You use your, e your eyes to see. You're visually seeing it. And if you use your hand to write, you're feeling it. Then maybe you could chew a mint or... Um, have a specific smell you use that's a little harder to control. But you can control what you see here and what you feel, right? So it's important that you're writing. All right, the last one for academic, if you're pre-P, just sit tight. The last one that academic needs to, is responsible for knowing is the chloroplast. Chloroplasts are found in plants only, and they're ovals with little panache like shape stacked on the inside. Without these little structures, we would not be alive today. They are so important because the chloroplast, it absorbs sunlight, and we know from sixth grade that sunlight is really radiant energy. It takes this radiant energy and it changes it to 
sugar or food, which is what? Mechanical energy. Or chemical energy. Chemical energy. Ah, chemical energy. It's late. Y'all have all gone home and I'm still hanging out. Trying to get y'all prepared. So, the chloroplast absorbs sunlight. Radiant energy changes it. Radiant to chemical. Makes food. Makes sugar. Chloroplast makes sugar. Without this chloroplast, we would not be here today because we wouldn't have food to eat. Plants make food. Even if you eat meat. If you go home and you eat a steak tonight, that cow that the steak came from had to eat grass or hay or food pellets from the mill. But it's still eating a plant product. And then its body takes those plant products and it changes it into other forms. And then we eat the meat. But we also eat plants because we're omnivores. All right, if you're academic, you're good to go. Pre-AP, keep listening. The next organ I want to talk to you about is the Golgi bodies. Golgi bodies are kind of fun, funny. They're like little inverted C's. <laughs> Maybe not inverted is the right word, but they're all stacked. And then they have like these little pieces that hang off of them. So Golgi body or Golgi complex, pretty much the same thing. And they package and ship it, um, ship things that the cell needs, specifically proteins. They're like the UPS. They're like the UPS for the cell. They package and ship proteins. Get you another note card or another piece of paper. Again, make sure you're writing. The next organelle I'd like to tell you about, or we could chit chat about a minute, is the endoplasmic reticulum. I'm going to draw a few things before I draw the endoplasmic reticulum so you get an idea of where it's located in the cell. So the endoplasmic reticulum hangs out by the nucleus, right? So my nucleus was red to begin with, so I'm going to try and stay consistent. So there's my nucleus. And then. I don't think I've used pink yet, so pink's going to be my endoplasmic reticulum. So my ER likes to chill, likes to hang out around my nucleus. And this thing is kind of hard to remember what it does, and I don't really think that scientists actually knew what it did for a while because there's not much about it written in my old biology book. But anywho, the endoplasmic reticulum is like a highway system, and it also makes fats. So it's, it's a highway system that moves proteins and lipids and it makes fats. So we're just going to write that it's a highway system and that it makes fats. And guess what? You're not going to be tested on endoplasmic reticulum. You do have to know it for certain, for like your quick, well, I don't even know if it's on your quiz, for your um, cell model, but I not testing on cell, on the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER. So one thing that I do need to tell you is that the endoplasmic reticulum, part of it's rough and part of it's smooth. And the only difference is, is that the rough has these little dots on it. And these little dots are known as ribosomes. So when you look at a cell, you have these little structures. Really, they're like two little pieces that sit on top of one another, but they're so small, they're hard to see under the microscope. So teeny tiny. And um, what these guys do is they make proteins. So your cell is pretty much made out of proteins and fats and carbohydrates and nucleic acids, but you don't have to know what those are. Um, but these little protein dudes make the proteins and proteins make bigger things. So pretty important little dudes and they're all cells. They're even kind of prokaryotic, prokaryotic cells. Simplest bacteria cells have ribosomes. And last but not least is our lysosome. And I'm just going to uh, use a darker blue maybe. Okay. So if you're, this is my cell, right? 
And this is my nucleus. We talked about how cells have vacuoles. Animals have small vacuoles, really just like little bubbles that hold food and water. So those would be little vacuoles. Another thing that's like a vacuole in an animal cell is a lysosome. In lysosomes, the difference is their digestive organ. So what happens is they capture um, waste, they, di they like break it down, and they move towards the outside of the cell. The outside of the lysosome like connects with the cell membrane and it opens, kind of opens to it and like goes whoosh, and lets it outside the cell. It's kind of cool, but um, lysosomes digest waste. They break it down, right? Our digestive system breaks down food. Lysosomes break down waste in the cell and help to get rid of it. Oh, I just realized I forgot to write the word ribosome. All right, so my challenge to you is to use one of these crazy words like endoplasmic reticulum, lysosome, ribosome, mitochondria, uh, vacuole in a sentence to your friend. See if they can say it right. See if you can say it right. Crazy words. Um, again, if you need help with this, please see your teacher. We're here to help you. Um, these videos are to help you at home just in case um, you can't see after school, but we're here for you. So make sure if you need some help, let us know and study, study, study. These new words are crazy hard because we never heard them before. So, And if you think of a cool way to remember it, please tell us. Peace out, students.